Welcome back to the Facebook live stream of the behind the scenes interviews at the 2016 inaugural Food Tank Summit in Chicago. My name is Chef Alia Dalal. I am the guest host of Chicago's Best on WGN. And joining me right now is one of our speakers from this morning, Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, um, who spoke on a panel about unlikely alliances in the food yeah. system. What an intriguing title. Um, I would love for you to talk a little bit about um, the World Food Prize. Because I know that was one of the main things you were here to talk about today. I mean, as a chef, I'm intrigued by that title. Yes. I have a great <laughs> veggie burger. Can I win the World Food Prize? And that, well, it's uh, the short and quick answer is it was created to be the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture. It's a quarter million dollar prize. We give it every October in Des Moines in our magnificent state capital, so it looks like a Nobel Prize. <laughs> And we give it to individuals from around the world who have made a breakthrough, Nobel-like uh, accomplishment in increasing the quality, quantity, and availability of food in the world. So that's at the, the heart of it. Started by Dr. Norman Borlaug, Iowa boy who grew up, went to Mexico, developed miracle wheat, took it to India and Pakistan in the 60s as they faced imminent mass starvation and save both countries from hundreds of millions of people perishing. So in 1970, he got the Nobel Peace Prize. He also has the Congressional Gold Medal, America's highest um, civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, all the history of our country. Only three Americans ever have those three awards. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Elie Wiesel, who just passed away, the Holocaust survivor, and that farm kid from Howard County in Northeast Iowa, Norm, Norman Borlaug, who passed away at the age of 95 in 2009. He started the World Food Prize 30 years ago. I have the incredible privilege uh, I worked with him for a decade, and now I endeavor to carry forward his legacy. Yeah, I say, what a legacy. And what are some examples of some of the projects that have won the prize? Well, this year, this year, yeah. we, this year we had four laureates and uh, two women two men, two African scientists, two American scientists, and what they did is they have worked how do you breed nutrition, vitamins, minerals into staple crops. And so that as people are eating their diet, they're getting more nutritious food. And particularly they did it in something called the orange fleshed sweet potato across Africa. And this is the way you have countries where the diet is so poor, you have large-scale stunting, but with the orange flesh sweet potato, if you consume that, now you're getting the vitamins and minerals that you need, the stunting can be overcome. So that was this year. Uh, we've had uh, pioneers of bi modern biotechnology. We've had the heads of uh, NGOs, presidents of countries. Catherine Bertini, who's kind of a Chicago uh, Woman, I was going to say Chicago girl. I probably shouldn't say, <laughs> but uh, Thank who, you yes, for yeah, 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 no, respecting, yeah. yes, no, but uh, who uh, led uh, and pioneered the largest, most effective food distribution and emergency relief system in the world in the UN, uh, and really interestingly, in 2012, our laureate, our winner was a man named Daniel Hillel, an Israeli irrigation pioneer who was nominated by three Muslim scientists from Arab and Muslim countries for his work. And the Secretary General of the UN came to Des Moines, helped present our prize. So there can be some wonderful, wonderful moments. Definitely. I feel like your career definitely brings up the relationship between, um, you know, good food or and diplomacy. I know this is something that, that yeah. you were talking about earlier today as well. And I, one of my favorite quotes from the good food movement is from Elliot Coleman. And it's, when we feed ourselves, we become unconquerable. Oh, I, feel oh, I love that. Like that's a little bit I more militant. That. I stance, love that. But I, I think that you really bring up a great point that that. Um, the ability to feed ourselves, take care of ourselves, um, whether we're talking about a small community or a large community, is really inherent um, to peace in general, which Absolutely. is Absolutely. So um, I was, if I can just say, I was, in, I was in Milan for the Expo. And there, using food diplomacy, 
And part of the American presence was having this wonderful specialty restaurant where everyone could come and have the top chefs from America, maybe you were there, <laughs> uh, coming and preparing meals and taking turns coming, and a food diplomacy that was established. Very interesting, very intriguing way of linking people. Um, at, you know, and, and, and at the same time, if you look back in American history, nutrition and good food was at the heart of our effort to be strong militarily. You know, in, uh, as World War II approached, America had a very hard time raising an army because so many people, so many men, were poorly nourished. And so enhancing nourishment, eating better, good food, food pyramids, and what's better to eat uh, about this enabled America to be physically strong enough to confront terrible enemies during World War II. So now we have the reverse, where our military services will have trouble getting uh, men and women because they're overnourished, mm. you know, they, uh, and we need to be eating better to be, to be stronger. So this morning in my panel, when asked, what uh, might you suggest to the president-elect? And I said, he should say, make America healthy again. <laughs> So, and that's because he's a person who believes in strength and making our country healthier will make us stronger in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then just one final question as a, uh, not only a career diplomat, but maybe a diplomat from the city of Des Moines to all of us here in Chicago and obviously everyone watching on Facebook all over the country. Um, what is a, if we go to Des Moines, what is a, what is a restaurant, a food spot that we have to go to? Wow, you have to go to Proof. Proof? Okay. Proof. What am I going to eat there? Huh? Uh, they, they're, this is, uh, the chef is uh, someone who's been a James Beard uh, contender and uh, does northern uh, Mediterranean food uh, in but specialty foods. And uh, there, my, my son got married and we brought in people from Shanghai and Hong Kong and his wife was from Thailand. And we took them to Proof. They couldn't get enough. They wanted to go back the next day. Awesome. So, yeah, great uh, way to win the info is over. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much right. for joining Th me, oh, Ambassador. Thanks. thanks for having me. Uh, we'll be having more behind the scenes interviews all afternoon long right here on Facebook Live on Food Tank's website. Um, if you want to catch up with me, see what I'm up to, my name is Alia Dalal. You can catch me at aliadalal.com.